Jenny, there are three things I love about your speech. The first one is the maturity. We've been watching Jenny give speeches for 10 years in this club. And we've seen you rise up from that young girl who was all Captain America and Captain Beckham and I don't know who else, but you've risen up to be a very mature speaker standing here and representing yourself very well. The second thing I loved about your speech was your voice. Your voice has so much clarity to it. Your speech is something that is easy to listen to. It's a voice that we want to hear. It's a voice that we want to listen to. And the third thing I love about your speech is the concept of it. Building bridges, not burning bridges. Building bridges, not burning bridges. But this is a contest speech. And a contest speech has certain requirements to be successful. And so the rest of my evaluation is going to be talking about what we can do to fix the speech. Because while your speech is a beautiful personal journey about your own walk through life, and I really enjoyed listening to your story, I really enjoyed learning about how you actually landed up to becoming a translator. I had no idea you were a secretary doing a boring job that you absolutely hated and that you were forced to work overtime. These parts of your life story that we don't know, and that's the purpose of Toastmasters, we come here and we share those stories. However, the problem with your speech, and it's a big problem I think, it's fundamentally something that you really need to think about working and changing. Although it's a beautiful story for a Toastmasters meeting, it's a beautiful story to share, I don't think it's a compelling contest speech. And the, most, and the biggest reason for that is because you do absolutely nothing in the speech. You are a passive acceptor of circumstances. I was, in the, I was in the company, I had this evil boss, she's yelling at me. I didn't yell back, I didn't fight back, I just stood there and took it. Then I changed jobs. And then I went to another company where everybody was nice, they came late, and I just sat there and I did nothing, I just made sure I built the bridge. But I did absolutely nothing, I just sat there. And then after that I went to college and I, and I remember I didn't burn the bridges, I remember I built the bridges, and so I did the same thing in the university. But you are actually the passive acceptor of your circumstance, not the active actor in your story. And so what I want to hear in a speech like this is what relationship did you break and how did you build it back? I want to know who did you hurt, who did you break, who did you destroy, and somehow find a path back to building that relationship. That was my Chinese speech is about that. It's about the relationship with my father and how that was broken and that was healed by my father coming to Taiwan and asking me to forgive him. That was something that somebody is doing very actively. And so if you want to compel people in a speech, in a contest speech to do something, you have to tell them something to do. Like Albert's speech over here is just one more, just one more, just one more. We get it. Okay, you can do something with your life, just one more. Your speech, although, once again, the maturity of it is beautiful, the voice is beautiful, the concept is beautiful. Once again, I stress that. But once again, it's like you kind of leave us, just sit there and don't do anything. Take the yelling, take the nice people. Because if it's me and my boss yells at me, I yell at my boss and I get fired. All right? So this is the issue I have with your speech, that you are the passive acceptor of your circumstance. So try and think of a relationship you absolutely broke down and then tell us how you fixed that relation. You burned the bridge, tell us how you built it so we can build broken relations too. Generally, that you